As quilters, most of us can probably remember our first quilt or our first inclination to quilt. And for me, it was a class with friends, and I really enjoyed that. And, and who knew where that adventure would lead? But sometimes we want to learn to quilt because we want to make a gift for somebody, or we want to quilt in our, our, our room that we can't find elsewhere, and, and just have the idea that we can choose those fabrics, put them together, and, and make something beautiful. And, and you never know where that's going to lead you. I certainly wouldn't have thought I'd ever be teaching quilting online, of course, we didn't have an online in those days, but that's beside the fact. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I can tell you I never thought that an online store would ask me to quilt one of their, their samples for a new pattern, and I'm really excited to share this with you. It's the Turnabout Quilt by the Fat Quarter Shop, and the first one I made is the Green and Lavender, and I love it, and it turned out so pretty. And Then the Fat Quarter Shop came out with their support group, quilt pattern and I took one of the panels one of the quilt blocks and made a pillow out of it which is what you see behind me with a pink bow right front and center and it's their breast cancer awareness quilt that they're doing this month in order to raise uh, funds for the National Breast Cancer Foundation and so I thought it'd be fun to do the pillow and of course the pillow needs a quilt so I made another turnabout quilt in the pink fabric and I love it and it turned out so pretty and what I did on both of these is I, I changed up the binding in that I used a couple different fabrics and that's what I want to show you today not just how to bind a quilt but how to combine different fabrics join them together put it all around the quilt and attach it and then sew it down and use a decorative stitch so this is going to be a fun tutorial that's a little bit different and I think it's something that you'll really be able to use and apply right away because many times we put quilts aside and don't get them finished because we don't know how to do a particular step or maybe we're a little intimidated or unsure how to do it or what it'll look like so I'm going to show you and you're going to be able to finish it in no time so let's go ahead and get started I'm anxious to share this with you I'm glad you're here with me today oh and please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video and subscribe I'd love to have you share some quilts with me in the future so let's go ahead and get started I'm ready I want to show you how to bind a quilt and there are some fun ways to do it and one that I like to do is mix up my fabrics in the binding and in this particular case I'm using two and a half inch wide strips and I'm alternating between two different fabrics and I want to do it in such a way that the first fabric and the last fabric are different um, otherwise the two if they're the same they join up and you have a particularly long piece of one which may or may not be an issue for you but in this case since these are relatively even um, in length I, I kind of want to keep that going now what I do is I measure my quilt all four sides and get a total and I use the, the calculator on my computer and it, it's actually quite easy because each of these as you can see they're a little bit different in length some are longer some are shorter some are short that they don't even show up down here so what I do is this quilt was roughly 52 inches on each side so take that four times is 208 inches so I put the 208 inches in my computer or excuse me in my calculator but I also want to add an extra two inches for every strip because I am going to piece these diagonally I, I like when the color blends across an angle versus just having them you know straight up and down additionally when your um, strip is at an angle like this as you're sewing it you don't have one big lump in there this seam is spread out over the couple inches which works well for me so for each strip that I have I need to add um, two inches so I have one two three four five six seven eight so that's 16 and I already have what do I have 208 plus 16 will be 224 and so what I do is I start measuring my strips now these were anywhere they were 22 24 and 27 so I would take my first strip and I'd subtract 
24. Then my second strip, subtract 27. And I'd keep subtracting till I get to zero, and I'd keep cutting more as I needed it. And once I got to zero or a number greater than what I wanted, I knew I was good. So that's an easy way to do it. Alternatively, if everything is the same size, um, it's an easy multiplier. But whatever works for you. The calculator is just a quick and easy for me because if I get distracted and I go somewhere and, and if I'm cutting at the same time, I may say, oh, I know I need six strips, but do I need, you know, two of this one and across three different fabrics? It's, there, there are variances. And I always like to show a couple different way to, ways to do things because our minds all work differently. And, and some things just work better for, for some than others. And for me, when I've got multiple fabrics like this, it's just easier to do it on the calculator because then, you know, I, I know I'm going to be um, pretty darn close. And if I need an extra piece, which I, I have them here, I don't know where I put them. They disappeared. Um, they probably fell on the floor, but I have a couple extra of these strips. These are the shortest, and you notice I'm going to start with this strip, and I'm going to end with this strip. So if I find out that I need more, I've got a piece of this I can add to here um, just to lengthen it, because it, it'll only be a matter of inches if I need it at all. And because this is a shorter strip, it's still going to balance. And, uh, you know, balancing your your strips in the in the binding is not a critical thing. I'm just doing it because I have the fabric to do it. But binding is more about an accent and you only pick up bits and pieces of it. No one looks at it to say, OK, is this piece longer? Is this piece shorter? Unless, of course, you use a lot of like small pieces, six to eight inch and you use a ton of colors. And even in that case, if, if you do the uh, angle, which I think blends it a lot better, no one's really going to notice the difference in, in the color or the size or how close they are. They're just going to see this splash of really fun binding. So that's my theories on binding. The first thing we're going to do, whoops, is put our binding together. So I always start with my first fabric horizontal and with right sides together I bring the second one in at the opposite direction. Now I do use the walking foot when I do my binding because there's so much fabric. I could technically at this point put my regular foot on to sew this but that's okay the walking foot will work fine here. I want to put my needle right there. See that point? Let me get my little uh, pointer here, my seam ripper, I'm going to put my needle right in that spot. I also want to make sure that my fabric extends on each side just by a little bit. It doesn't need to be a whole lot, but that way I make sure I'm not going to come up short or, um, you know, come down here and if this was cut a little crooked, but I'll show you the other reason. So I start right there in that corner. I want to come right here and by having this piece extend a little bit I can see that corner where I want to go and so I'm going to watch my corner I'm not going to watch my needle because it's the corner that's important the needle is going to go where I'm watching okay so we have the first one down we're going to do the second one and I'll do the exact same thing so I measure this here and here now I want to put this nice and straight and if this is straight I can tell this was a little bit crooked but that's okay as long as I keep this straight I'm good. I'm going to raise my presser feet so I can put my needle right there. I'll take a stitch or two to get myself where I want to be and then I'm going to line this up so I come right down here. And then we'll just keep adding and repeating the same process until our binding is complete. And I've come to the end and all the strips are sewn together. And there's one other thing that I do. I don't like um, wasting fabric and I want to use every little bit within reason and that means 
what I can do at this point is I can come through and I can cut these, but I don't want to discard them. I want to be able to use them. And since there's two colors joined together, this would make a great half square triangle that I can use in a future quilt, some kind of a scrap quilt. So what I'm going to do is I want to measure over from here and come over half an inch. And I just happen to know that if I keep this space to the side of my presser foot, that that's going to be a half inch. I've just done this enough. And so what I'm going to do is just sew along this. And it doesn't take long because they're already sewn together. So you just feed them through quickly and go through the whole group of them. And then we're going to come back and trim just about there and trim these pieces off and I just keep a little basket where I'll go back and I will probably have to cut them all to size because more than likely they are not going to all be exact because I do this pretty quickly. All right, so then what I do, cut my thread, is I'm going to cut right across here. So I'm going to cut between the two pieces like that. So I'm getting my binding taken care of and I'm going to have a nice little strip of half square triangles. That'll be fun to work with. And I leave them connected when they're the same fabric um, or the same pairs of fabric. That way if I need more than one you know, I can I can group them together depending on whatever it is I'm going to do. But that way you kind of have an idea of of what you have and it's easier to plan. All right, this is kind of wrapped around and giving me a hard time. Now you do want to be careful here because you don't want to get those strips underneath and cut a piece that you just sewed. So I always keep one hand or excuse me, one uh, finger underneath as I'm cutting to make sure that I'm in the right place. So I'm going to cut off that thread. So I have this nice little strip of half square triangles and I'm going to set aside. And now I'm going to be ready to do my uh, binding. So this is the beginning. I'm, oh, that's right. I need to cut these apart, don't I? That'll be hard to do the binding without trimming these. So just come through and cut each of these apart. And there we are. So we're back to the beginning. I'm going to move, well, I'll keep that there. Sometimes that is a good good visual. Now I'm just using white thread on this because um, as, as you saw on the quilt, it's predominantly a white background um, with some, some pinks throughout. And I'm going to start on the back. I quilted it with my um, favorite, whoops, get some, pieces with my favorite um, long S. It's sort of a meandering S quilt pattern and, and it works great. I love it because I can start in the middle of the quilt, work to each corner, and it really makes it easy to get a quilt done on this kind of a machine that only gives you so much space to work with because if you start from the middle and work to the edges then you're not going to have all that bulk once you get that first row or two down it just continues to get smaller now i am going to do my binding onto the back and wrap it to the front and everybody you know has different methods of this is the surefire fire way to do it well this works for me I, I don't like putting it on the front and then wrapping it to the back because for some reason I, I feel like I sometimes miss the mark. But when I do it this way, I don't know if I'm just more conscious of it and I can see it better from the front. I have no idea, but it works for me. So whether you do this on the back or the front doesn't matter. You pick what works for you and you make that that be your your constant, your way. Now, as you're sewing, see how this little guy wants to come up? Make sure you keep that down because if it rolls over, it's going to be on the inside and won't be noticeable, but it, it'll kind of jar up the rest of things and they won't quite um, be as even as they should be. And you want to keep your binding 
pretty even together. So I'll, I'll come back about six or eight inches. I'll lay it along the edge and just sort of hold my hand there. I keep this arm here because there's a lot of weight and I want to keep this moving relatively smoothly. So I move my arm as I go and my elbow sort of digs in and uh, keeps that moving along. I want to get to this first corner and uh, show that to you and then we can whip through this real quick and do a couple corners and then we get to the front side and show you how this this finishes up but you know binding can be really a quick and easy project um, for me I think my favorite part of quilting is piecing the front because I love all the colors um, doing the quilting I enjoy but because my machine no longer lets me free motion, I'm limited to what I can do, only because my machine is 20 plus years old. Mama needs a new one, and that's coming soon. But then, um, you know, the binding is quick. So once I get that quilting done, I can usually get finished pretty quickly. So you want to, as you get to this point, you want to keep an eye here because you're only going to sew to a quarter inch. You don't want to come all the way off that edge because we're going to make a miter corner. And if you look here and just sort of come up, actually, I think I can squeeze a ruler in there. Can I do that? Let's see. Get it under. There we go. So here's my quarter inch along my quilt right there. And you can see I only want to come this far. So I have the advantage of having a triangle right there that I can sew to. But, you know, you're going to visually get accustomed to that quarter inch as you just quilt in general because it is a measurement that we use frequently. So I came to within that quarter inch, and let me show you. Whoops. This right here comes back and we have our quarter inch right there. Actually, it's probably just a little bit more. Um, not by much, but I'm okay with that. So let me go ahead. One thing that I will recommend when you're using pieces of binding, when you add that first strip on, you want to take a look and measure it to make sure that you're not going to be putting a seam um, right here on this corner. It's doable but it can be a little difficult because it gets thick. And if this is the first time you're doing your binding, the less of that you have to worry about, the better. So lay your binding out, making sure that this is either before or after your corner, depending on how long your strips are. So now, keeping our binding folded, I am going to put this in place, and I want this to be straight in line, and I'm going to crease this little bit of a corner right there, that fold. Our binding is lined up with the edge of the quilt and we have this folded over. Now I'm going to bring this down. This is what creates our mitered corner. And if I can find that back piece, so just kind of give yourself a little press right there. I don't press my binding first only because as I'm moving around I find sometimes that fold I don't want to, you know, doesn't remain in the middle. I, I sort of get this extra crease after the fact because when you, you press this and then you fold it and you fold it, that fabric readjusts itself and I find that my fold kind of isn't exactly where I want it to be in the end. So I've just become accustomed to this. But again, if you like folding it first and that works for you and it's easier for you to go ahead and flip it over that way, then absolutely. And it's through experience of doing this repeatedly that you find what works best. Now, I used to pin my binding, but I don't do that anymore. Clips are probably easier than pinning because you get those pins in there and you go to grab your binding or your quilt and it, they, they stab you. See how I'm rolling up here? So I wanna keep that underneath. And so just go ahead and work your way through and, you know, keep yourself on a steady pace. When I get to a seam, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to press this. I want the seam to come towards me 
and if I do them all the same, it just makes it easier to sew. Now, one thing I will say too, as I'm sewing, you'll notice that I'm holding the fabric in place. I'm not pulling it tight, but I'm not letting it be real loose either. Because if I sew it and it's loose, your binding is going to kind of wave on you and waffle a bit. And that that's difficult to manage when you go to sew it down on the other side because you end up with more binding than you do quilt. Whoops, that piece doesn't want to stay put. So always, you know, keep this binding taut is the word. And that just means that it's firmly in place but not stretched. If you pull it too much, then you're going to have your binding. You, you've seen where it happens where you get those, let's do it on the bias, kind of, can I make it happen? You pull it, it doesn't want to work, but, but you get these stretchy marks. And you don't want your binding to have those stretch marks along the edges where you pull it too tight. Um, it just looks, you know, like it doesn't fit. And that's not the idea because we do have a binding that fits perfectly because we did the math. We made everything go together well. Of course, we'll find out at the end how well I did my math. Um, that's why I, I keep the little pieces along the side, which, by the way, I found. They did drop on the floor, but I have them within reach. So if I need to add it, and again, I do my my uh, pressing towards me so the seams come this way and make sure everything lines up perfectly and then I go ahead and I sew right along this way and I just keep going. I got all the way to the end here and I thought we were going to have a corner on a corner or a seam on a corner but looks like we're going to get around it but let me show you one more time how to do this corner. We want to make sure that our edges all line up. We're going to come down to within a quarter of an inch, which is about right there. And I'm just going to trim this off. And I, I tend to trim these close because when I go to turn my seam binding, I don't want to have extra threads that I'm cutting along the way that just get in the way. So now I'm slowly turning my quilt because I have to go around a corner and not knock over the camera or the lights or any other important parts going on here. So again, we, we line this up straight and hold our fingers so it's perpendicular. So both are going straight in line with the quilt. And I'll just finger press that so it holds it well. Give a little finger press here. And because I'm going to start over because I didn't do this, I need to finger press that as well. Okay, so with that a finger press, right here we're going to put that in and <laughs> I just can't win today oh my goodness there we go we're on okay and then just the littlest bit extends I like using my little pointer you can see that's just just a smidge over it's not much at all and now I'm going to line up on this side and so Oops, get that in there, there we go. Okay, now line this up and we're going to do the same thing all the way to the other side. So give me a moment and I will be right back. Now in order to join these two end pieces together, I need to measure them, whoops, sorry, hit the camera, so that I know we are going to meet up spot on. I just cut some threads that tend to get in my way. Now this overlaps a good bit. We want to have at least two and a half inches. Now what I do is I will decide which of these pieces is shorter and cut the other piece because the more fabric I have to work with the easier it is to do this corner. Now this one is shorter so I'm going to cut this. So what I do is I overlay these and I fold them. You can do it open if it's easier but since there's such a short space to work with it it would be hard to, well I guess, yeah it's, it's hard for me to do it. Let me show you what I'm doing. And this just works better for me. So I fold that over and I fold this one over and I overlap them but I want to be able to see both because I'm going to measure this 
and there we go. So I need to have a two and a half inch overlap. This is a two and a half inch ruler, which is really handy to have. If you don't have this, just use your regular ruler and measure over two and a half. But for me, um, this works well. So I'm going to measure from here to here. Now, the trick is when you cut this, only cut the top piece, don't cut that bottom piece. And I'm going to hold that and cut it pretty straight. And got a nice little scrap to put in my pile. Now, I'm going to sew these together just like we did the other pieces, right sides together, corner to corner, and I am going to overlap it just the teensiest bit. I find it just helps me when I can see where the fabrics join and I'm more apt to get a nice straight line that way. Now if it's easier for you, always you know draw a line on here. That's, that's certainly um, something you can do. And in the beginning, that's probably the easiest because until you get that um, feel, oh, that's right, I gotta do my second. Nope, these are the same colors. I, I don't sew together the same colors. Um, I'll save that and use it for something else. So, okay, I'm just going in a ton of directions here. I hope I'm making sense. So I press this down now. When I pull this out, here's here's the go-to. Look at that. Look at yay! It fits wonderfully, and this is just the slightest bit tighter or smaller, which is good, because I don't want to have more binding than I have quilt. So I am just going to tuck this together with my seam down and put them together. Yep. So I don't even need to pin it. It's going to fit perfectly. So I'll just come up here, line my needle where I le left off, and I will kind of hold this at a halfway point, um, so pull it out the whole distance, and I do want to make sure that that's even. There we go. Uh, so that. And I do the same thing. So I hold this so this is all nice and even. There's there's no gaps. There's no, um, you know, where one side's distinctively longer than the other. And I'm just going to hold it. I, I grab the middle between the area that I, I'm sewing between. And then that just keeps me on track. And then when I get down to the end here, I just hold the bottom where I want to sew to. And there we are we have binding and it's all attached and it's wonderful and it's beautiful and it looks fantastic I have some threads up here I need to cut and again I do cut these close because when you fold over your binding um, to sew it down the last thing you want are these little threads sticking out because it's kind of a pain in the neck all right so when we're doing our binding this is what the front looks like we're going to bring up see oh that's where I started that's why because I didn't cut my threads back okay I probably have shared this in the past one thing that I did the first time I did this is this fold sometimes will extend beyond it just depends on how you fold it and I thought okay I don't want that extra fabric there and I cut it I trimmed it off because I thought oh I have a miter corner I don't need to worry but watch what happens if, if you cut this fold Look at all that. I had these two cut ends and I'm like, uh oh, that didn't work well. <laughs> so don't trim that fold off. All right. So I do use a pin or you can use a clip. I haven't got, gotten on the clip train yet. I, I've just used pins for years and I've got plenty of them. So until I bend them all and have to throw them away and need something new, I'll, I'll probably stick with them for a while. So this I just sort of put in place because I know that's where that's going to go. This one I, I kind of finger press from behind. So as I'm, I'm running my thumb down the top, I'm running my finger down the back and that pulls my binding out. Again, if you prefer to press at this point and it makes it easier for you, this would be a good place to press if you want to get a nice crease here because then you're going to have a nice fold. 
I find if I do that first, that fold almost shifts a little bit because I've got it folded here at the seam and then I'm folding it again. And every fold you make takes up just a little bit of fabric. And again, that might be more minute than you care to worry about, but it's just something to keep in mind if for some reason things aren't lining up and it doesn't make sense. All right, so let me get some pins. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring this over and I put it on the seam and then just a little bit because I'm going to sew right inside here. And in order to do that, um, I, I need to make sure that I catch the back and I want to make sure that that seam is right there. So as I'm sewing on the front, I'm catching this side and I use a buttonhole stitch um, because it's kind of decorative and fun. Now you can just use the straight stitch which is fine and I just like the look of, of the, uh, the uh, buttonhole. Now actually I'm not going to pin this one because I will wait until I do a full corner because there's really nothing to hold down here. So let me tuck that aside. and. I am going to turn my machine off and turn it back on to reset it to its standard settings because I had adjusted it to a little bit longer um, when I was doing the quilting and everything. All right, so I have my buttonhole stitch set and what I do is I make the width and the length the same. So for the length of the stitch, I'm going to get an equal width and that's just what I go with and there are obviously a lot of different choices there that you can make and so I want to bring this up and you'll notice you're going to have this miter on the back see how we have that nice corner and in order to replicate that on this side we need to follow that same method so I want to maybe I will put a pin in because this is wanting to fold over more than I care to have it so I'm just going to tuck a pin right here so I can keep my fold right there where I want it. And I can press this. I'm going to double check one more time. And my, it's still coming over. All right. There we go. I'm just going to hold that with the pin so it stays right where I want it. And I'm going to start right here just inside the edge. Now, I have um, a spot on my presser foot. I don't know if you can see it. There we are. I can fold it a little bit down. It's straight across and then it angles a bit. I'm going to line this up with that straight part right there, that straight edge, before it goes to the side. This angle will allow enough for my seam to be enough from the edge to pick up the back side. If I have a visual like that, it just helps me stay straighter. So when, when you're doing um, a stitch like this, then find a way to align it that allows you to follow through and stay consistent. And I always stop with my needle down. And when you do a decorative stitch like this, you don't want to pull your fabric because it will distort, distort the stitch. Um, it'll stretch it out and elongate it and it just won't look as attractive. So I let the walking foot do all the work. I do hang on over here just to lift this fabric so it doesn't drag anything down. Oh, I got off edge, see, I started talking. All right, now I wanna show you what this looks like. So see how this is, is the buttonhole? I really like how that looks. And then by using that little narrow edge, it picks it up right here. Now, there are those that, that prefer that that long stitch falls right there in the seam. But when you're using a decorative stitch, it's okay to see the edges. So I am going to go ahead and uh, go around to the first corner that we need to face. Um, and, and turn and sew, and then we'll pick up back there and get that, uh, get that turned, and I'll show you how to get that set up. I'm coming up to the corner, and sometimes as you're sewing on, on the edge, even though when I um, squared up my quilt, I cut all the edges nice and even, um, you still get some threads. I just tuck them in, 
and even if it's a little bit longer it's going to stay inside it's not going anywhere so I'm going to continue sewing this until I get to about within an inch or so of my corner because this is all going to fall into place nicely so I just want to put this where I want it and sew to about right here okay and I'm going to stop with my needle down and when you're using a um, pattern stitch you want to when you stop the best place to stop is when you are between or transitioning between the pattern so in this case the pattern is that horizontal piece that that sticks out so I want to make sure that I'm stopping on like the straightaway so to speak that way um, if I kind of move or deter you know my needle sort of sw uh, swerves one way or the other it's not that noticeable because it's in the straight area whereas if it's on the decorative part then sometimes that can um, be more noticeable so these are just little things along the way none of it is critical in and of itself but a lot of little steps um, can definitely create a better looking result okay now do you see how I did that I came in and I pinned this piece where I want it to fall and then I just take something you can use a stiletto a needle but the seam ripper I rather put this to use um, other than ripping seams so when I can find other ways to use it I, it makes me happy so I bring this in I don't just bring it straight over I bring it over and down because there's a you know three widths here I have my backing my uh, binding or excuse me my batting and then my quilt top so there's a good little little lift there and I want to take this and make sure that goes down all the way to where it, it's touching the back of the binding and then just sort of bring this up and what I do I usually get a um, bring my my um, seam ripper to that side and pull it over but I'll do it this way so you can see it is I will just kind of unfold this a little bit so that that fold lines up right there do you see how that lines up so we have a nice corner and you're going to have this fold opens on this side and this fold opens on this side and that's what creates your miter so we're going to go ahead and I have all this so see here's what I use oh, I guess I can do it when you can see it I'll, I'll tuck this in and I'll just pull this just a little bit to get it where I want it to be and I know I'm being fussy but if you can see what it is I'm doing then I think it makes it easier for you to understand what the purpose of it is um, am I always that fussy absolutely not but when I show you I want to show you the best way so you get the you know really good results and then you can pick and choose what works for you so again push all these threads just tuck it in there and I'm going to hold this here now this is already being held in place the uh, fold got sewn from underneath now I am going to pull this over just a little bit making sure if you use this make sure you're not poking holes in your fabric there we go I'm going to put that right there and I'm just going to slowly come down I want to make sure I'm lining this up with my foot and it helps to have something hold this as you're going around that corner and getting started all right now now we're ready to fly through this and again don't pull it just you know let it take itself at its own speed because that's how you're going to get the best looking pattern if you're using a decorative stitch if you're doing a straight stitch um, it really doesn't matter other than if you pull it too much your stitch length will get quite long so see we have a nice corner here we have a beautiful corner there and it matches up right here to get you know a good good corner right there with a boxy edge and that's just what we want um, so that's that's essentially it so let me go ahead I'll get to the next corner we'll do it one more time and uh, then we're going to have this quilt finished it's coming along we're just about there all right I'm coming up to this corner I do want to show you one last time just tuck your finger here and lay this down and get up pretty close to where you're going to be turning your binding I'll just bring this to about that far 
So I've got it nice and close and I'm going to fold this piece here and I will go ahead and pin that just to hold it so that I don't have to worry about that slipping or moving around. And then I'm just going to bring in this here and look at how well, I just make sure my fold is on the right side. Tuck this, I pull it, bring it all the way so it's covering my line like that. And then I'll hold it with my finger and bring this fold out. There we go. Oop, I let go. I think it's going to work. Just tuck it in a little bit. I probably came a little too close with the needle than I needed to. I was kind of on a run. Okay, so I am going to set that there. That lines up pretty darn well. And I'm just going to hold this right up here. And with my needle down, I'm going to turn. And I'll keep this pin in just while I'm getting started. Make sure that's all in good place. And then once I get close to it, pull it out. Whoops. And when this happens, it, it sort of wants to flare up. And that's because we're so close to the edge. It's easy for it to flip up. Just, just tuck it under. All right, now I'm going to sew to the last corner where we started, and I'll show you how we go around that corner, and then we're finished. Let's take a look at one more corner. I'll just go through it quickly. So I'm going to fold this over to hold it in place, and that way I don't have to worry going around the corner with that slipping or turning. And then this just sort of opens up, and I take this side down and bring this over the top. And again, we want to make sure that the fold is on opposite sides. So we have this, this is laying nice, the pin's holding it. Just bring your pointer, whatever you're using, tuck it down, and then grab this fold right here, pull it to the top so it's covering those stitches. And then I just, just hold it with my uh, seam ripper or stiletto or whatever I'm using. And then of course, we just need to make sure that that fabric stays down. You can also use your other finger right here. So whatever's close and handy and works best for you. And then I'm going to come in one stitch and turn around the corner. And I'm going to actually bring this back a little bit. It looks a little on the thicker side than where I want it to be. There we go. And again, I'm, I'm using this to line myself up. So I'm going to sew to the other end of this edge. And that's our original corner where we started. And I'll show you how to finish that off. Okay, so there are some threads you have to cut. Um, these that are close to the edge, but these in the inside, just tuck them in. All right, here I go. We shall return momentarily. We're coming to the beginning, back to where we started. And the first thing I'm going to do is just trim these threads, get them out of the way. And this is what I had pinned in place so I could sew this. I'm going to take that pin out. And I shouldn't need it because everything is being held well. And so I have my nice corner here. And what I'm going to do is just take this and kind of fold it in. Now you'll notice this sort of wants to stand up a little bit because what we're doing essentially is gusseting and making a box. So we just want to kind of play with that a little bit to get it to lay down. And then once we pull this back into place, see how it lays nice? So it's all about getting this little guy lined up. And again, if you have something pointy, that's fine to use it. Just make sure you're not putting a hole in your fabric. And just hold that along the way. And it just closes up nice. I'm going to check one more time. Make sure that's nice and lined up with the corner. Again, these are things that nobody, a non-quilter certainly would not know to look for. And most quilters would probably not even pay much attention to it. 
But now what I'm going to do, this is finished. I always turn my corner and I lift my needle and I set myself on the straight, straight um, stitch. And I line the straight stitch up here and I just sew about an inch. And that way I know it, it locks up all the threads and I'm not going to have anything come loose. You can see the thread, whoops, the uh, sewing is a little heavier there, but that's not an issue. And see how nice that corner came? And that's it. So there we are. We have a bound quilt. And I'll you'll see it at the beginning. So this is sort of after the fact when it's hung up, you'll see it. But I will take a picture of the um, of the whole quilt laid out flat so you can see it at the end of this video. This is a special quilt and um, I'm, I'm going to also include a link within the video, this particular video of how to make this. Um, I made this for my sister. This is a breast cancer awareness um, quilt project that I made and she's a breast cancer survivor and I thought what a great thing to do especially because she has her birthday in October um, to make her a beautiful pink quilt and wait till you see the pillow that goes with this. I'll put that in this video too. So there's a lot going on at one time, but right here we're focusing on binding. I just wanted to share those extra things with you. So, all right, we're finished. Um, let me get those photos I can show you at the end and you're ready to bind a quilt and combine colors and different fabrics and just create a really beautiful um, binding on your quilt. It's such fun to see the transition of colors as you, you go around the quilt. So you're ready. Go ahead. Get started. Do your own. I'm anxious to see it. Remember, Instagram, hashtag Leah Louise Quilts. I want to see you there. And here's the turnabout quilt in uh, the green and lavender. And I just love the, the pretty flowers in the, uh, the center. Uh, the fabric came with a really nice panel of flowers, and I, I used the remainder of them on the back, which was kind of fun. But what I really liked about this, and, and it's always fun to finish it off with a fun binding, is I had a, a batik. It was a striped batik, and I had them in a couple, couple different colors. And you can see if you look along the edges, one is purple and the other is green. So they worked per uh, worked perfect. <laughs> they worked purple. They worked perfect. And I really like how it sort of, you know, plays off the colors in the quilt. But I love the stars and the flowers. And I think it turned out really pretty. I'm happy with it. And here's a quick peek at the back. You can see around the fold there that the panels um, are, are sort of off-center going down the center. I think there were about six or eight extra panels that I put in there, and it just looked kind of pretty. It's a fun way to finish off the back. And here's the pink variation of the turnabout quilt, and I, I love how this turned out. The dark stars um, in the background, the accent stars, I think are really pretty. But again, with that border, I like changing colors in the border. It just adds a lot of interest. And in this case, it I used the star fabric for part of it. And then I used the, one of the geometrics from the, uh, the bigger stars. And I think that just works really well. It adds interest, but, you know, it, it kind of accents the color too. So the next time you bind your quilt, grab a few pieces of fabric, get some, some pieces that are left over, and maybe something completely different. I've done that before where I'll do a bright color quilt and then use maybe black and white or navy and white, and stripes are often fun. I do like to include geometrics, and I think that just keeps it very interesting. And, you know, dark colors are always, uh, you know, kind of catch the eye and, and really frame the piece. So have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a thing or two about adding some binding to your quilt. So go ahead and get started and get one of those quilts finished that you've been working on and, and kind of putting to the aside because you didn't want to bind it. And double check now with the Fat Quarter Shop and don't forget to get your free copy for this star pattern right here. It's quick and easy and it's so pretty. I love it. All right. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for watching.